A few days ago, Patrick released a video called Will AI Replace Us? And he's using the new artificial intelligence system built into Luminar 4 to do crazy things to his photographs completely automatically. Now, the thing that stood out to me the most was the automatic sky replacements. I did not think anything like that was possible. And if you guys have ever tried to replace a sky, sometimes it's incredibly easy. Sometimes I would say it's almost impossible, especially when you start trying to replace the sky in a background that's out of focus and you've got this blooming around all of these different objects, maybe leaves, it's incredibly difficult. And all of this got me thinking about the tutorial that we recently released with Mike Kelly where he's going into every little minute detail about replacing skies and how he does it on all of his architectural photographs. And so what I did was I grabbed some of the most complicated images that he actually replaces the sky in the tutorial with and I dropped them into Luminar because I just wanted to see for myself how good the software was. And I've learned some pretty interesting things. I thought I should film this video. I thought you guys might like to see it yourself. It's certainly not a replacement for Photoshop, especially if you want to get in and really fine tune things. But for the majority of what people do, especially if you're a portrait or real estate photographer and you're just knocking out tons of images and you need to replace guys super quickly, this software is incredible. All right, so here in Luminar 4, we've got four different images, and each one of these images has its own complexities when it comes to replacing a sky. A lot of times when you're taking portraits of people outside, you're going to get pure white skies like this. But if you have your subject focused on here, you can see that we've got all these blurry trees in the background, and you can see this blue blooming that's going around all of these trees. It is such a pain in the butt to try to replace that sky manually, unless, unless you do something really, really faded. Now keep in mind, Luminar has a few skies here you can use. A lot of these skies look great. Uh, you can also drop in your own skies if you want to. One downside to this software, I don't think right now it accepts raw skies. Mike Kelly's sky library is all raw files, and that's how you're gonna really be able to fine tune the exposure and the white balance. You can load raw files into Luminar, but not raw skies, at least from what I can tell right now. But I was making Mike Kelly skies JPEGs and then dropping them in and they were working great. But let me just show you what this does. If I just click blue sky one, it's gonna drop a sky in here and it's gonna be almost perfect right out of the gate. Obviously this is a little underexposed here, but we can easily fix that. We can just go to advanced settings. I can ramp up the exposure here. You'll also notice that it has uh, gone over our subject just the littlest bit here. I can go to edit mask with brush, click on the erase tool here, and I can just paint it out on her. And that's all I need to do in terms of a mask. You will notice that the sky is sharper than the trees here. So what we need to do is simply go to sky defocus. I just want the sky to have a similar look to those trees that are blurry in the background. And I feel like that looks really good. I, never in a million years would I think that software could figure this out, but it's done a really good job around these blurry areas. Let's move on to the next shot. This one poses its own problems. As you can tell here, we've got some areas of this image that are really bright. And so I would imagine that the skies are going to blend into this. Let's see how easy it is to um, paint that back out if it makes a mistake. We'll just try blue sky two here. Okay, as I expected, it's really eating into this building here. Let me see if I can move this. You can move the skies up and down. That's something else that's, that's a bit of a bummer. I wish they gave you a little bit more control over what you could do with the skies in terms of like warping them and moving them around and everything. Uh, because sometimes you really want, a, you know, one cloud to be perfectly behind something. But I mean, as I look at this, it looks pretty good. I mean, it has done an absolutely amazing job around this entire image, except for this one area of the building that was so reflective here. Let's see if we can see the before and after. So as you can see, what it's done here is it hasn't deleted the building. It's just kind of put the, put the sky over the top of it. And uh, oh, you can see a little error here as well. 
I don't think any of this would really be noticeable, but it is pretty noticeable here. And I think that's partly because we're trying to make such a significant uh, change to the sky. It was a pure white sky, and now we're trying to go to this deep blue. It's probably just not the best option for a sky. Let's drop another sky in that's a little bit brighter. So this one, Sunset One, I mean, I feel like it looks perfect right out of the box without doing anything. And I think this kind of shows the limitation of the software, but also it just shows you how important choosing the right sky is. I mean, I can't see any flaw with this at all. And Mike Kelly was having the exact same issues when he was doing sky replacements. He was having to uh, completely give up on skies because he could just never make them look realistic. But then when you got a sky that was a little bit closer to the way the sky looked in the original photograph, you could really make it look good. And uh, I, feel, I feel like this looks perfect. Let's move on to the next shot. Now this is a tricky shot for a completely different reason. We actually have the sun in the shot, but it's hard to see the sun here. Um, but you can see the, the light rays coming around this building. So it'll be interesting to see what the software does for the sky. I am going to pick a sunset because I think we want the sun in the shot. I mean, that looks really good. Let's uh, see what another one looks like. Too much. I mean, that looks pretty good too. Let's do this one. Let's do the first one here. And I am going to lower it just a little bit. And then the other thing that you can do here is you can add the sun and the sun rays. So I can move this sun position to right here. And I can add sun rays and look at the way, I mean, it looks like it's coming from around that building. It's crazy. You know I am the sun ray king and I like overdoing the sun rays. Now we can go back up and we can mess with the uh, temperature of the sky as well. Keep in mind, uh, it's not gonna give you all the same latitude as uh, a raw file, but again, if you're just looking for something quick, and then we can change the sky exposure as well. In many cases, when I'm trying to replace a, uh, a really bright sky, I wanna replace it with another bright sky. But I feel like that looks pretty good. So if I flip the before and after on, I mean, it, it looks totally believable. I mean, I, you know, I don't wanna use the word perfect, but this is like as perfect as you could possibly get. It even gets like in the windows up here you can still see the, the natural color of the sky. Now that I know that software is capable of doing this, I don't know why Photoshop doesn't uh, have this feature yet. This is crazy. All right, let's, let's, go, let's move on to this last shot. This is another tricky image to replace a sky on, but uh, it might actually be a little bit easier than the last shot because we have everything pretty much sharp and we also don't have extreme backlighting. Let's see what the software does with this one. Maybe this one should be like a dramatic sky. Again, I'm trying to kind of match what's already in there. Uh, it's not really working for me. I mean, that looks cool. Let's try number three. I mean, look how much better that looks. It's crazy how good that looks. Let's zoom in and really check the mask, see if there are any errors. So around the tree, it looks perfect. Around the buildings, it looks perfect. I don't see any errors. Right here, you can see that the sky has, has just barely gone across this building here. See that reflection right there? But I gotta be honest with you, that looks real to me. 
that seems like exactly what it should look like. Let's keep moving. I mean, it's done a perfect mask everywhere else. Let me, let me actually see how much this software costs because I don't think it's that expensive. Luminar 4. All right, so the software is just 89 bucks. Uh, if you are the type of photographer that is constantly replacing skies, this software blows my mind. And I hope that Luminar can somehow integrate this with Photoshop. I, I hope they can somehow make it some sort of uh, plugin or something. And they can actually make it create detailed masks that you could then send over to Photoshop for more detailed editing. If I click uh, show mask here, it's not gonna show anything because it's not actually creating a mask. It's like doing its own thing. But then if I start erasing out, like let's say I don't want the sky right here, you can see it's gonna start erasing that out. And now I can see the mask, but it's just what I've done. So it would be nice if Luminar gave us a few more options in terms of uh, the ability to use the pen tool and create perfectly straight lines or perfect curves or go into luminosity masks and really fine tune things. But I have to say, in terms of an automated system, this is far better than anything I thought was on the market. And I never in a million years did I think there was software that could do this automatically. Now there's probably two types of photographers watching this right now. There's probably the ultra professional photographer that's like Mike Kelly. Maybe you're selling art prints and everything has to be perfect. You wanna have complete control and you're into Mike Kelly Sky Library with all the raw skies and everything because you want everything to be flawless. But the majority of people watching this are probably like me. Maybe you shoot weddings, maybe you shoot real estate. I used to do both. And I had to replace skies all the time and I hated it because it was so tedious. This software doesn't seem to be a gimmick. It's actually working. It's doing an amazing job. It's not perfect for every image, but man, for the majority of images, you can get a sky in there instantaneously. It looks great. And that's really all I ever cared about, especially when I was shooting real estate. I just had to knock these photos out. And every time I took an exterior of a house, I had to replace the sky. If I could do it with one click, that would have changed my life. And the best part of all, this software is only 89 bucks. So if you use it only for sky replacements, if you do it enough, it's definitely worth its weight in gold. I think you're gonna love it, but check it out, see if it's worth it to you. It's definitely worth it to me.